Good morning, everybody. Lee Brower here. Welcome to this week's edition of Meaningful Monday. I am grateful to be here, and I am glad to be here. Show you something. You've heard me talk about in the past arrows in versus arrows out. What do arrows in and arrows out have to do with happiness? So when we talk about arrows in and versus arrows out, one of the things that comes to mind right off the bat is that false happiness is really based upon comparison. Comparison and expectation. For example, um, look at so-and-so. It could be worse. You have a broken arm, so somebody says, look at so-and-so. They've got two broken legs. It could be worse. You know, we compare all the time to help other people feel happy, but that's false happiness. When you're wishing for somebody else to become worse than you, that can't be true happiness. So perhaps true happiness comes from looking with the arrows out. How can I help someone? How can I be of service to someone? How can I put somebody ahead of myself? That's where true happiness comes. Recently, I was sitting down with a colleague, somebody that works for a strategic coach. We were going big before our session. And she frequently brings in great, great positive stories about her son, who's eight years old, and she brought in one. She talked about how he'd go, for the first time in months, going back to school, but they had the social distance. They had him off with another boy, off back in the back, behind some things that made it difficult to see the blackboard. So I think what she did was she went to call the teacher and say, is it possible that you can move my son up closer so he could see? As she was saying this, her son says, no, mommy, no. And she looked down like, why? And she goes, well, he goes, well, if I move up, that means that somebody else has to take my place and they won't be able to see. What a lesson. What a lesson. Now, it turns out the teacher responded by saying, I put your son there because he is one of the smartest kids in the class. And I felt like if anybody could see it and get along with it, he could. Now, but look at the moment and look at, she shared it with us, which motivates us to start looking at outward rather than inward. How can we become better leaders that look outward, not just inward, not just what's happening to us? And do you know what this is going to do mean to me? Do you know what this is going to happen to me? Or I'll be happy when, or I'll be happy if. But if we move to that outward mindset, to where our arrows are truly pointing out towards others, that's where true happiness comes in. Her whole story brought back a great memory that we have of our son, Nick. At a time when he was going through particularly the toughest time. And in that time, he was getting radiation and he had chemo. But the radiation had scarred the inside of his throat so bad and up into here that they put him on feeding tubes. But yet when you're on feeding tube, the stomach was empty and the acid boiled up and it would come up and it would start irritating those open wounds in his throat. And it was painful. Extremely painful. And I'd remembered a quote, really, but I converted it to a story. But the quote was, if we all threw our problems into a pile and saw everyone else's, we'd go grab ours back. But I made this story up. Imagine a genie comes down and every all of us got to throw our problems into a pile. And the story, as the story goes on, Nick, you know, uh, we were allowed to go back and pick whatever problems we want. And everybody went in, and when they saw everybody else's, they picked their own problems and take, took them back. We were sitting, I still remember where we were sitting. We're sitting around the dining room table, just the three of us, Lori, myself, Nick. And he says quietly, I wouldn't take mine back. Now, we understood in that moment. We totally could understand, but we were lost for words. So it was just quiet and emotional. And he said, as he thought about it and he pondered about it, he said, unless it means that somebody else had to take mine and then I would take mine back. In both of these examples, the arrows were pointing out. How can we as leaders, I truly believe that our youth that are coming up today can see the arrows pointing out better than we can. I truly believe that this is a royal generation that's rising up for us. But ask yourself this question today. How can I point my arrows out this week? Have a meaningful week. I look forward to talking to you next week. Bye-bye.